Lisa with Luna Moth Creations and I am back with a new oracle deck and a book written by the same author um, just because I really just wanted it. <laughs> so hey guys, <laughs> hello and welcome if you're new to my channel. My name is Lisa and on my channel I like to do lots of witchy things including oracle deck unboxings. So that's what we're going to do. And um, I've got a book here too that I was excited about. So this is a brand new um, oracle deck that Amazon, I just got from Amazon, it came in the mail, um, but it just came out like this week or something. So I'm super excited. I honestly don't even know what the cards look like because um, they only showed like a tiny bit on the website because it was a pre-order when I bought it. Um, but it looks beautiful. So it's called, what is it called? Stellar Visions Oracle Cards, your guide to astrological and mystic power. It's a 53 deck and guidebook by Stephanie Galing, illustrated by Sasha Davis. So that is the front. And then it has some of the cards back here, but because it was an astrology deck, I thought, ooh, that'd be something cool. And then I looked at her page and she had some books. And there was two books I wanted, but I only got one right now. I'll get the other one later. Um, but The Complete Guide to Living by the Moon. So we're going to take a look at this book as well. Because um, it looked pretty cool. It's got um, things about the moon and, and astrology, self-care activities. Anyways, I wanted to show you guys this. So I am going to turn the camera around. We're going to take a look at this deck. I'm so excited. See you in a minute. Hey guys, I was kind of thinking that we would jump into this book a little bit first. Um, let me see. Okay, I just wanted to get in there a little bit more. So this is the complete guide to living by the moon, a holistic approach to lunar inspired wellness. So I just kind of wanted to look a little bit through here. So we got part one is the lunar cycle and moon mapping. Then we've got the astrological moon. I guess that's basically it. So connecting with the moon, the moon is a timekeeper. So it just, just talks about a lot of things to do with the moon. Part one, the lunar cycle and the moon mapper. Oh, how pretty is that? Let me scoot this over here. Oh, it's so pretty. Very nice. All right. And then it talks about the different, um, so basically if you're going to be uh, setting an intention at the new moon, it talks about the new moon's intention, and then crescent moon is initiation, first quarter action, gibbous is refinement, full moon illumination, disseminating is sharing, uh, last quarter maturity, and then the basalmic, I guess they're saying basically at the new moon, um, is renewal. All right, and then it kind of shows you the actions that you'll be taking there, um, how to moon map, lunar phase timing, qualities of the lunar phases, very nice. Uh, and then it talks about, um, I guess we're going to have chapters on each of the phases of the moon, which is going to be lovely. Oh, and they've got a tarot card um, association. Very nice. And then we've got, um, yeah, I think I knew this was like a journal type thing. So they are going to have some journal areas, um, self-care activities, um, vision board, yoga, be in nature. Um, and then it talks about like, say the new moon is in Aries. Um, some of the intentions could be desire, courage, willpower. So there's that. I think, uh, what are we getting ready to have our, we're getting ready to have our full moon in crap. I can't even remember <laughs> off the top of my head. Uh, I think, is it in Aquarius? I think it's actually in Aquarius. I'm pretty sure. Cause I was watching, um, if you guys don't know who Heather Eland is, she is my astrology teacher and, um, she had a video about the new moon coming up. So, and then talks about intention setting rituals, action items that you'll need. All right, and then we're going to go into the other kinds of the moons, and it has basically that same type of stuff. So I'm just going to see if there was anything further after all of those moons. Let me let me actually look at the table of contents. I don't think so. Um, so after Pisces, let's see, we're going to go to 208. Oh, actually, they've got something else. 
your sun and the moon. Very nice. Okay, so if so, my sun is in Aquarius, and it's saying if your sun is in Aquarius and your moon is in Scorpio, which that is actually what mine is, it says you're passionate about social progress with your intellectual might and emotional chops. You can help communicate, no, excuse me, help communities navigate group dynamics. You have a unique sense of vision with your Aquarius sun, you've got objectivity. While with your Scorpio moon, you also want to view things up close. And I'm assuming that they have that. I must have missed it in the other ones. So let's run over here. Yeah. Oh, very nice. So if your sun, um, if your moon is in Sagittarius, they link it up with your, um, with your, uh, your moon. All right. And what did I say? It was like page 208. It's the end of that. All right, so the moon in the houses. So if your moon is in the first house, it says feeling connected to your body, having a sense, strong sense of personal style, being confident in how you carry yourself in life, having your emotions be recognized by others. So it will, um, you look at your chart and see where your moon, you know, which house your moon is in, and then you can kind of dig in here. Um, moon moments, so lunar return. Uh, and it's got different activities, it looks like, and journaling prompts. Planetary connections to the moon. And daily moon signs. When the moon's in, because I think it's going to be an Aquarius, it says do a group activity, work on lo uh, logistical solutions, and consider humanitarian issues. Look out for detachment and being too cerebral. All right, and then reflections on the moon and her resources. Very nice. All right, so I just wanted to do a quick thing. She apparently... Okay, guys, so this is our Stellar Visions Oracle Cards. And let me open it up. I'm so excited to see what these look like. Is there tape? Oh, there's tape. Hold on, let me find my... Let me find my X-Acto knife. I didn't realize there was tape on here. But from the backs of this, back here, these cards look like they're going to be gorgeous. And I really, like I said, I wanted to add another astrological um, deck to my collection because... I really need to focus on getting all my courses done, so I'm doing um, I'm doing a bunch of courses. Oh no, is there? Hold on, there's cellophane. <laughs> hold on, hold on, guys. Let me get my exacto knife again. There's a nice big, uh, thick. Um, oh, my battery's running low. How is my battery running low, dude? I just. I just had it plugged in. Well, hopefully I can get through this video without um, having to recharge my battery. All right, so here is our, let me move this over here so you can't see it. Here is our guidebook and it is beautiful. Okay, we will go back to that after we look at all the cards. Okay, so these are the backs of the cards so we've got a lovely i wonder whose wheel this is because well i guess they just have it linked up so they've got capricorn with its saturn um so it's not necessarily somebody's uh natal chart it's just what goes with it because we've got aries with the mars and uh taurus with venus so anyways that is the backs of the cards they're pretty big like they're really big like here is another oracle deck like, look how big it is. And then look at it compared to, like, a standard tarot. <laughs> These are big cards. All right. So let me just start. Oh, my God. They're so pretty. So we've got sun, and it says radiance. And, again, I'll pull one card so we can look at the in-depth um, information from the uh, guidebook. Moon. Mercury. Oh, the moon said emotions down at the bottom. And then Mercury says communication. And of course, it's got um, uh, Mercury's little symbol at the corner. Then we have Venus. And it says attraction. These are so pretty. Mars, desire. Jupiter is growth. Saturn is discipline. I am so stoked. I'm glad I bought this. Pretty much sight unseen. Uh, Uranus, freedom. 
the box just looked beautiful, so I thought, oh, I'm going to take a chance. Neptune is oneness. Pluto is transformation. Chiron, which is an asteroid, it says healing. Juno, also an asteroid, it says uh, partnership. Palis is uh, a strategy. We're looking, these are asteroids, guys. Uh, Vesta is devotion. And then we have our north node, which says purpose. South node, which is tendencies. Oh my God, I'm so freaking excited. Look at Aries. Woo! Trailblazing. Taurus is sensual. And then I guess it shows uh, ruled by Venus up there. Gemini is curious. So we've got um, Mercury for its ruler. And then we've got the Gemini sign right here. Oh, and I guess so it, right here it shows like, uh, like the astrological wheel with all the signs. When we were looking at like the planets, we had like a little like solar system looking thing. So. All right, so we've got Gemini, and then inside here, we've got the constellations, so you guys can see. So we've got Cancer, and it says Sensitive. Oh my gosh, Leo, Creative. Virgo is Discerning. Libra is Balanced. Scorpio is passionate. Let me get this out of the way. Nobody needs to see my exact on it. Sagittarius is exploratory. Capricorn is hardworking. Aquarius is altruistic. Oh, I love her. Pisces is fluid. All right, then we get into the houses. So we've got this little house in the corner and then it says the first house and it says embodiment. Second house, resources. Third house, learning. Fourth house is home. Fifth is self-expression. Ooh, sixth house, well-being. Oh my God, this deck is beautiful. Seventh house, relationships. Eighth is intimacy. Ninth, discovery. Tenth house, career. Eleventh is community. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, I love the dreaminess of all of this. Okay, 12th house is transcendence. Okay, now we're moving into aspects. Um, so we've got ascendant, which says orientation. Uh, I see. And then it says roots. It, and it's like Imam Kodai or something. Is that what that is? Then we've got our descendant, and it says others. You've got your midheaven, and it says uh, mission. Then we've got conjunction, which says union. Sextile, and it says cooperation. Square, and it says tension. Trine, which says ease. Opposition, polarity. Oh, and then we have moons. And then, so it's got moon phases up here. So we've got new moon beginnings, full moon illumination, eclipse thresholds, and retrograde, and it says review. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. Okay, I don't even know how to shuffle these because they're so big. <laughs> uh, but I always, like hand over hand. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be hard. These are huge. All right, what do we need to know today, y'all? 
What do we need to know today? All right, so we've got the sun. Okay, let me focus in on that. Okay, and I'm gonna read from our book. It should be at the beginning. There's also like some, so moon mapping, which is kind of what she talked about in the book, the big book. Um, and then it just talks about how to use it, everything, the Oracle cards. Okay, the sun. So this is our page for that. I'm gonna read it to you, but let you focus in on the sun. So it says, inspirations, shine your light, be a hero or heroine, or heroine, excuse me. Show up and be seen, be proud of who you are. So the Oracle reading is, it's your, your time to shine, assume a position of visibility and get the recognition you deserve. To do so, just be the majestic being you truly are. When you draw the sun card, it's reflecting that you're in a powerful position to bring things to life. Therefore, it's especially important to be mindful because whatever you cast your conscious attention on will gain strength. Additionally, seeking counsel from father figures, notably those who are generous in spirit, will energize your confidence. If you're feeling listless, survey your environment to see what or who may de be depleting your life force. Looking for a missing object? Search the most illuminated areas of your space. It's likely hidden in plain sight. And then it says astrology. The sun is the center not only of the solar system, but also of astrology. After all, most people's introduction to this sacred art is learning about their sun sign. In a birth chart, it reflects how we shine and what gives us vitality and the deep essence of our self. The sun has one year orbit and when it returns to where it was when we were born, we experience our solar return. Many astrologers use the solar return chart as a way to gain insights into what the coming year may inspire. Affirmation is, I am who I am. Stellar reflection question, how can I enhance my sense of vitality? So this would be really good that you can, um, you can do a journal um, entry based off this little um, stellar reflection question. So that is it, guys, for the Stellar Visions Oracle Cards guidebook. And then I also showed you her um, book by the same person, The Complete Guide to Living by the Moon. And I would love if you guys would give me a thumbs up, leaving me a comment below really helps out my channel. And again, if you're not a subscriber, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And I will leave a link below for this um, deck and the book if you guys are interested. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.